Hello and welcome back to another installment of Pokey Potter and I do apologize for the lack of video yesterday. What happened is, is I recorded the video and for some reason the audio portion didn't save. And um, by the time I realized it, it was too late to redo the video simply because I would have to basically start over from scratch. So what you're gonna see today is yesterday's video, hopefully with sound this time. And if there's no sound, then you aren't watching this anyways. So yeah, anyway, what I want to talk about today is, and I'm, I'm still on it, Banish decks. Like I just, I've made no, mis I, I, like I haven't mixed words with this. I am not a fan of, of banishing figures. I think that's way too steep of a penalty to pay for losing a roll on top of that. Like, yes, you can win when you've lost a figure, but like coming back from that is extremely, extremely difficult. And I, I would say in the grand scheme of things that your chances of winning if you've had a figure banished are, you know, somewhere in like, 10 to 15 percent range so it can be done it depends on what point of the game you're in when you lose your figure if you lose it right off the bat it's it's probably gg if you lose it at the end of the game when you're kind of in control anyways it may not be that big a deal and something you can overcome but i would say in a very very large percentage of games if you lose a figure and your opponent does not lose a figure then you are going to lose the game and I just think that takes away from the, the spirit of the game. The spirit of the game, in, in my opinion, is kind of like chess or checkers, where you try to outmaneuver them, board placement, matchups, to, you know, like overpower and gain board position on your opponent, not you're flat out missing a figure and I have more figures than you. So, you know, it's easier for me to maneuver around and then you have to play defensively. And so what I did, and I actually have to give credit to numerous people, the deck that you see here, the Pumpkaboo Gorgeist, actually started with a conversation with, with Booms from Discord. He mentioned that, you know, we'd done a rematch and he'd mentioned that he wanted to test out the Pumpkin Boos. I was like, wait, what? I, and I had to go back and look at Pumpkaboo because if you're like me, you probably don't even remember what these figures along with Gorgeist do. So we'll just do a quick review. Pumpkaboo is a grass ghost type that has um, the infiltrator ability with a minor level five. So a 36 wheel slice of trick or treat, a three star purple that attaches a pumpkin marker to the battle opponent. Other Pokemon may MP move through the Pokemon that have a pumpkin marker attached. A four miss slice and then a 56 wheel slice of bullet seed that does, it's a 10 spinner. Now I will tell you that when I leveled mine up to five, I did put it all in the trick or treat. We also have Gorgeist, which is a, also a grass ghost type with the ability of Harvest Festival. If this Pokemon is excluded from the duel and that's what we're talking about, exclusions. Exclude pumpkin Pokemon with pumpkin markers attached to them from the duel. This Pokemon can MP move through other figures. Mine's level four, because I haven't put a whole lot into this. It's got two uh, miss sections. So it, it, mine has nine miss spread out over two segments. A 23 wheel slice of a three star purple trick or treat. We already went over that. Shadow sneak, which is a 50 gold attack. A 20 uh, two star purple explosion, which this Pokemon and the neighboring Pokemon blow up. And then a 28 wheel slice of seed bomb. There's a lot going on with this figure. And quite honestly, the way that I'm using it in this particular deck is I'm trying to get it banished. So with the gist of the deck, it went through, you know, I originally started, and I think the first video I'm going to play back for you, it was, the, the deck originally started with um, three Pumpkaboos, Gorgeist, Leafeon, and uh, Phantom with the evolution to Treviant. Uh, it wasn't real successful, and I'm just going to be totally honest, this deck is not really good. Um, you're you're going to lose a lot more than you're going to win, but 
every now and then, and I'll show you in one of the two videos that I'm going to show you, you get everything to line up and it makes all your losses worthwhile. At the same time, what you're trying to do, if you haven't figured it out, and if you don't remember, is you want to tag as many figures as you can with the trick or treat. And then I have my Altaria next to my Gorgice on my goal. Hopefully when they attack my Gorgice, it lands Pear's Song, which in turn curses my Gorgice. And this is a lot of setup, and I'm telling you, like the deck is not great. Pumpkaboos are pretty much never gonna knock anything out. I rarely get two spins and, and, and like one in a hundred do I get more than four spins. So they're not strong. They're gonna get knocked out by pretty much anything gold. But what you're trying to do is just, they're there just to put trick or treat markers. Then what ends up happening is you want to not knock out the figures that have the trick or treat markers. After losing a lot, I went to the end discord and Nilla and Supa and Popstar Kirby kind of gave me some ideas and then we have the final build here that I've been running with the Gorgais, the two Pump Caboos, Coco Zap, and then Altaria. And that is kind of the final evolution. I'm going to show you two videos of this deck and two different ways that you can win with this deck um, with two different builds. The second video that I'll show is, well, you know what, I'll show, the first video I'll show will be with this deck here. And it was actually the game that I played live yesterday as I was recording. So you can watch that one. And then the second video I'm going to show is going to be the uh, one of the pre-builds, the earlier builds of this deck. And I will say, Supa did mention that Kahinkio showed a video that had Gorgeist and Pumpkaboos in it. It was a, a Mega Altaria feature. And so just... You know, I went and watched after Super told me, but I'd already recorded all this, and I've been running this deck for a while now, but just in case there's any uh, question as to where I came up with this idea, I actually didn't. This was Boomzilla. This was my take on his deck. So if you'll give me one second, I will find the game code. Okay, so here is the code for the very first one. And like I said, I'm pretty sure that this code is with the deck that you guys saw. And so let's check this one out. I'm obviously on the far side and my opponent is running a banished deck. So this actually sets up really nice for me. Kind of an interesting open with Zap to the corner instead of bringing out Tapu Coco. I'm just gonna throw my Coco in the middle. And what I wanna do, like I've said before, is I'm just gonna throw my Pumpkaboos out in front of everything because I'm trying to land trick or treat markers. That's, that is their sole purpose. Other than that, they are basically fodder. They're, they're going to get knocked out, and then I want to recycle them as much as possible. And as you see me continue to set up the board, all that I'm trying to do is get my Gorgeist and my Altaria side by side. That's how this deck is going to work. My opponent rolls Roost, and like I said, I mean, Bullet Seed 10 is gonna knock out Deoxys Defense form <laughs> and, and anything that misses, and that's about it. So you're not running this deck for the power, it's, it's a niche deck, a trick deck. Um, I put some pressure on here, definitely land the trick or treat marker. And like I've said before, one of the hard things is, and one of the things that I struggle with, is when I land the trick or treat marker, well then I can't knock, I don't want to knock out that figure. And sometimes you end up, or me, when I say you, I mean me. Sometimes I end up playing poorly with board placement because I don't want to knock out the other figure, if that makes sense at all. Um, so that's that's one thing that I struggle with is when you get to that certain point and you have the marker down. Another thing that the, the trick or treat marker can do is it can actually remove curse markers because you can only have one marker at a time. So it's actually another advantage that's kind of a behind the scenes advantage. One thing that I am legitimately concerned with about my deck here is Russian Zek can easily knock out these Pumpkaboos. They're, they're not gonna put up much, if any, of a fight. And, and here my opponent is just greedy. Like, it's super easy for him just to take gold, but he becomes super greedy. I roll the blue, and that's GG. Here's, and the reason why I'm showing this one is not because it has anything to do with the, the Pumpkaboo decks, but because I was running the Pumpkaboo deck, and this was the video that I recorded, 
leading into that match, you know, like as if I were doing this yesterday. Oftentimes, I know I struggle from this, and this is maybe to help some of you that are trying to climb higher and higher ranks. If the higher ranked players probably don't do this as much as people that are ranked lower, but they see an opponent's deck and they're like, my deck is way better than this. I'm just gonna run them over because they can't handle my firepower, you know, what, whatever it is, my chain levels, my deck build, like my, my deck completely counters them, whatever the case may be. And they get cocky and arrogant. And that's exactly what my opponent did. It was, he was going to win that, I have no doubt. Like my, my Pumpkaboo deck wasn't going to stand up. The only chance that I was gonna have is dropping trick or treat markers down on my opponent and then getting one big banish of a lot of his figures. But if he had just moved over and covered up his goal, or just, yeah, well, he had to cover up his goal, or use goal block if he didn't like Altaria on goal, whatever the case may be, sometimes you get cocky and arrogant and you make dumb plays. My opponent made a really dumb play right there, and that's, I mean, there's no way to sugarcoat that. I wish I could say that, you know, he took a risk and he did take a risk, but it was a dumb risk because the game is all about risk reward, you know, like, like limiting your risks. And my opponent took a huge risk with little reward. If he knocks out my my um, my Coco, what, what does he get there? Like he could banish it, yeah, that would be great. But ultimately, the risk was you lose the game if you lose that roll. And anytime you can prevent those type of scenarios when you don't have to take them, just cover your goal. You know, my, my Coco wasn't going anywhere. <laughs> he could have taken control of his goal and then tried to banish my figure at a later time. So that is why I went ahead and kept that game in there for you, is just because, play smart. Like, even if you're better, if you're better, you're going to end up winning in the long run. And, you know, like I've said before, if your opponent is better than you or has a better deck or better figures than you do, you want the game to go as long as possible because the longer the game goes on, the better your chances of winning. Um, you know, the, when, when your opponent is outclassed and outgunned and everything else, the short game actually benefits them. And so if, uh, I'm looking for my, my code actually for the next game. So that is, what I wanted to say about that and hopefully that can help you improve your game just a little bit. Okay, so the next video of a game that I played that I want to run for you actually showcases the deck a lot more. Again, I'm on the far side. I, I haven't figured out why or how they decide if, if you're on the far side or close side, but it doesn't really matter. My opponent is running, you know, a mostly ghost deck, ghost poison. Uh, and so as you see the Sceptile, I have the Mega Sceptile in this deck and the Mega Sceptile's sole purpose is to act as my max revive. I actually don't like Mega Sceptile. Mine seems to die or get KO'd way more frequently than it actually knocks out other Pokemon. So I use that just as a max revive and as a deterrent, if you will. Again, you know, my basic setup here, there's no need for me to really go over this. The reason why I had Leafeon in this is Leafeon can move through grass types and trick or treat markers allow me to move through other figures. So a couple trick or treat markers go down and I can move my Leafeon pretty much anywhere I want on the board. And my opponent does have the curse option on his deck as well with the Mimikyu. So definitely something to keep track of. Like I said, Pumpkaboo is not a good figure. I do not recommend running this deck if you don't have a tolerance for losing at a really high rate. <laughs> so keep that in mind. Uh, Pumpkaboo gets hit with a curse marker on a miss, no less. Not that it really would have mattered. The only thing I could have rolled was my trick or treat, which I really feel like I should be able to roll trick or treat fairly often. Um, my opponent goes ahead and slaps the gold. There's no way that I'm gonna roll eight bullet seeds and that's gonna be GG for Pumpkaboo. No trick-or-treat markers dropped and this game actually 
There's, there's not a lot to like about this game in the early going. I lose many, many matchups, as I should. My opponent is way stronger than I am. I do get some decent rolls uh, right there with Leafy on. And then my opponent here in just a second, maybe this turn, right? Nope. On my opponent's next turn, he's going to take a huge risk. He's going to hop over and attack my Altaria. Now, I would have preferred Gorgeist to be next to my Altaria because Parish Song, he did Bright Powder to make me roll again. And I'm going to be lucky enough to drop the Parish Song again. And that's going to even up the playing field with one banished figure each after I take my Sceptile and surround his Lunala. Again, a really high risk, high reward. I think if he lands that, he probably wins the game. I, I can't remember if I have um, Gold Block in this deck or not. But that was that was a much better risk than the previous one because losing the roll and getting your finger banished actually just levels the playing field. It doesn't cost you the game. As we move on, I, I, I take my next few turns here to try to figure out I need to get my Altaria back on goal and I want to get it next to my Gorgeist. Um, I'm trying to remember here. I, again, I get another fortunate roll with the dodge. And then it's going to create the easy surround. And so I think now is when I start maneuvering things around so that I can get my Altaria back to, um, back to where my Gorgeist is. And we go ahead and bring out the Pumpkaboo. I probably could have moved my Altaria back, but I didn't want to do it just yet. Pumpkaboo, I don't know how else to say it. It's just not a good figure, <laughs> especially against the Sableye. Sableye, I, I only have one role that I can win, and that's Trick or Treat versus Will-O-Wisp. Leafeon was, was doing some work in this game. And Leafeon's actually going to be an important piece later on. Don't you love this? When you take an X speed and all you have is gold and a blue. Like the only role I could have lost there would have been landing my 30. But Sableye is predominantly purple and I'm predominantly gold and that doesn't happen. And then on the subsequent turn, I get my smallest wheel slice into his purple. It just one of those things that just is a crazy maker about this game sometimes. Will O Wisp is going to drop down on my Leafeon. That's pretty much going to spell the end of Leafeon for the time being. I do drop the Tropical Energy, which proves to be kind of a fruitless battle. You know, like really no reason to do that, I guess, because he immediately gets knocked out on the next turn. Maybe should have saved that plate for a later time. I get greedy here and I'm thinking, well, you know, I can spend Leaf Blade twice and again with the gold. My my Sceptile has been rolling a lot of gold lately and every now and then it's okay, but for the most part, it's it's not what you want. I think my opponent made an, a bad play here. He's, he's being hyper aggressive and that's okay, but he was in such control of the, the board and the game I didn't think there was any reason to let go of my entry point. I finally land my first trick or treat marker, which could have gone really bad had I not. And so we have one figure that has a trick or treat marker. He's going to break out his Mega Gengar. Good job on my opponent by keeping Gengar and Mega Gengar back for the majority of the game. But um, on this particular situation, we were able to drop our second trick or treat marker. Now it doesn't really matter on the Mega because once the Mega D evolves, it's gonna take away the Trick or Treat marker. I get a really nice roll here and knock out the um, Lunala. The bad part, part about that, like I was saying before, is now I've knocked out a figure that had the Trick or Treat marker and the deck doesn't work well to begin with, but it really doesn't work well if you keep knocking out the figures that get Trick or Treat markers attached to them because the only way to really make this work is to have you want as many of your opponents to have trick-or-treat markers at all times as possible. Bullet Seed, at negative 40, <laughs> like, I, I, there's no way that I'm going to roll anything good anytime soon. I really don't know why my opponent did that, because 
it's very unlikely that Pumpkaboo is going to roll enough to even do a positive spin, which on the next play, he could have taken his Gengar and hopped over and then knocked out my, uh, my figure as is. He rolls the miss, thankfully so. And now I have two poison figures, nothing with a trick-or-treat marker on it, and another cursed Pumpkaboo. <laughs> you know, and, and maybe this is a situation where my opponent got cocky, thinking, well, I have the far superior deck. Finally drop another trick-or-treat marker. And at this point, I just have to get my Pumpkaboo out of the way. <clears throat> because all Gengar has to do is hop over him. And I believe I'm cursed, if I'm not mistaken here. So he moves back, and, and I have no option. I have to just keep <laughs> moving this, this poor pumpkin around, or he's eventually going to get banished. I roll the miss. So now I have a huge miss section. I can't drop trick-or-treat markers down on anything, and I am cursed. That all pretty much is going to spell the end of the game. Again, there's no way that I'm going to roll eight. <laughs> Nine, actually. Uh, seed bombs and now I'm in a world of trouble. There's one figure with a trick-or-treat marker My Gorgeist is cursed which is the goal of the whole deck, but at this point I can't bring anything else out. I Have cursed figures everywhere Which is not good Get the unfortunate roll there Bring my Gorgeist over and this is going to be like a miraculous roll. <laughs> um, if I'm my opponent, I'm probably pretty upset about me hitting a, I think it's a 20 wheel slice of gold into my purple. That's the only way that he loses that roll. And we just got lucky. So I take my Leafy on because he has the trick or treat marker. I can move through him. It doesn't matter. I go over and luckily I drop a second trick or treat marker. And I have access to his back line. He's going to press forward with his Lunala. I'm going to threaten goal now. He does what he's supposed to do. I'm going to go cover goal. And then everything is set up perfectly. I have to bait my opponent to kill my goalie, which he does. And that opens the door for me to take the win. Which is, that is how the deck is supposed to work. If, if you can't just banish him and then you know win the game from there because you have the Mon advantage, the next best option is to banish their goalie and have a figure within striking distance. I could have done my Leafy on a couple different ways. As I was doing it, my whole thought was, is I need to bait him into taking out my goalie, but I don't want to move my, my Leafy on out of striking distance. But at the same time, I don't want to make it look totally obvious that I'm just playing it off. I think doing it over I think I should have taken, I, I don't know. I don't know, what would you guys have done? That, I mean, I, it worked out in my favor, but when I'm playing the game and I see an opponent move a three MP figure less than three MP and it puts it like four out, I always wonder, wait, do they have counter attack? Or what are, that was an odd play and it doesn't make sense. What are they trying to set up? And so I think for me, by moving my, my Leafy on to that spot, that would have piqued my curiosity. Is like, wait, why did he just do that and not attack with Gorgeist? Or, and, and I couldn't attack with Gorgeist because what would have happened is if I got banished, Lunala would have taken my goal, so that wouldn't have worked. I needed him to remove my figure. But it was very suspect play on my part. So let me know, what would you guys have done with Leafy on um, maybe not to make it look so obvious. Would you have, my other option I thought was swing around to the other side of Gengar, but I didn't want him to attack my Leafeon. I wanted to keep it away, if that makes sense. I know he could have MP moved up and then attacked my, my Leafeon, which is probably what he should have done. Although no, he couldn't because I would have taken goal anyways. I don't know. I, 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 my, my opponent was in a tough position um, but let me know, what, what would you have done with the Leafeon, and then how would you have attacked if you were my opponent? That's kind of all I got today. 
And I do apologize for the audio difficulties. Hopefully we have those all remedied and this video will come out and you guys will enjoy it. A week from today, I am leaving the country. I have no idea what my internet situation is going to be like. So just be warned that it could be, you know, a week from now, there could be a full week without videos. And I know I just went to New York and did like five days without videos and this will be another week, but it is what it is. That's all I got for today. So until next time.